right uh, so in this particular lecture we want to talk about the enzyme kinetics so i'll be using this uh, whiteboard screen to talk about the enzyme kinetics okay so let me write enzyme kinetics uh, okay my handwriting is not very good so it's actually bad so i apologize for that uh, but uh, try to explain uh, so many different things and uh, I believe enzyme or enzymology reactions and the processes lectures will be well understood if we draw it from the scratch rather than showing you PowerPoint presentations. So that's why I, I want to start with this blank screen uh, to explain things. Okay. So what I want to talk here is the enzyme kinetics and I, I told you like, enzyme kinetics can be divided into three different sections it can be like three different types Michael is maintained type I can I can say that Michael is maintained type mm type okay then allosteric allosteric type and there is also steady state or we can say pre steady state pre steady state type these are the three type of uh, enzyme uh, kinetics model that we generally talk about and among these three type uh, let me change it. let me take a black color actually it's better so actually we are going to talk about this Michaelis maintain type this is the most common one okay and uh, in this case uh, we can also talk about Michaelis maintain type into two different types you know generally there can be single substrate kinetics and there is also more than single that is two substrate kinetics so single substrate kinetics is known as mono substrate kinetics and more than one to two substrate kinetics is known as bi substrate kinetics so we can write it as mono or bi substrate kinetics so this is the uh, like overview of enzyme kinetics okay and we will talk about the michaelis maintain kinetics in details because <clears throat> Michaelis maintain kinetics is the most common type of kinetics. Most of the enzymes follow this kinetics. So whenever you uh, just take a biochemistry book and open the book, you always hear this term Michaelis maintain. Michaelis maintain equation. What is Michaelis maintain? Right? And you also see other kind of graphs and curves and so many things. You know, it seems confusing. And when I uh, was a student, started to read uh, biochemistry, I also found these things really confusing. And that's what uh, I'm going to discuss today. Okay? So... The Michaelis maintain kinetics, as as I mentioned, uh, it I believe you all have a simple idea about what it is. <clears throat> if you are from microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry background, or molecular biology background, even in zoology, biochemistry is very common, and enzyme is something that you always read from the beginning, right? So I believe all you have a clear idea, like a basic idea what what we generally talk about. So what uh, this Michaelis maintain talked about? Okay, they talked about the binding of an enzyme to its substrate and what they said is that we have an enzyme so let me write it like this we have an enzyme we have a substrate the substrate will bind to the enzyme and the moment it binds to the enzyme what it forms it forms an enzyme substrate complex okay this is very very important an enzyme substrate complex formation of enzyme substrate complex or es then this es will break down break down into what a product and the enzyme will remain as it is so enzyme started as uh, like end product of the enzyme and start is the same in between there are so many things that has occurred okay and in this particular uh, process in this particular process what we can say is that this production of the products as well as release of free enzymes this is a reversible reaction now what why we call it is a reversible reaction this first there are two stages right this is stage number one this is stage number two and let me take the color change the color once now this first stage where enzyme substrate state together to form enzyme substrate complex this is reversible okay so the rate constant for the forward reaction let me write it as k1 sorry where is k1 and uh, the one here we'll, let us write the reverse one is k minus one because the reverse reaction and the rate constant for the second step this is irreversible here because the single stage conversion in then substrate to product plus enzyme and the reaction constant is k2 the rate constant is k2 okay so you can see that enzyme catalyzed reaction here this is reversible so if they are reversible from that 
this Michael is in maintain derive a specific equation okay and this is known as a law of mass action what is law of mass action law of mass action let me let law of mass action and this is the motto of basically the michaels menten equation what law of mass action or lma in short form what this lma tells us so so what this lma tells that in reversible reactions the velocity of the reaction is directly proportional the velocity the velocity of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants to the concentration of reactant and in this case reactant is a substrate an enzyme concentration in this case the reactants are substrate and enzyme so the formation of enzyme and substrate complex depends on the concentration of enzyme con as well as substrate so the more the substrate the more enzyme substrate complex will form the more the enzyme the chance of forming enzyme substrate complex will increase there is no rocket science in it is very very simple so based on this law of mass action we can determine the rate of enzymatic reaction so how can we determine so rate of an enzymatic reaction equals to what the forward rate constant that is k1 into the enzyme substrate concentration this is how we can calculate the rate constant of the forward reaction of enzyme substrate complex formation into the enzyme substrate complex concentration will give us the rate of the formation of product so this is basically rate of the reaction means rate of the formation of product right so once we know this and we decide and particularly michael is maintain stated that this enzyme substrate complex that is formed here this is under steady state if there is no other influence from outside and we have enzyme we have substrate they will interact each other and form enzyme substrate complex and we can calculate the rate of the conversion of enzyme substrate complex to product by this formula k1 into es now in this steady state there are few assumptions that we need to believe in order to apply this knowledge what are that steady state assumption steady state assumption so what is the steady state what are the steady state assumptions let me let me write it first of all the concentration of the substrate must be more than the concentration of enzyme substrate must be more than the amount of enzyme that is present there okay second thing the enzyme substrate complex will be converted to product enzyme will be released this is irreversible this is irreversible only in one direction not in the backward direction i told you here okay and the third assumption the reaction is in steady state means no other commotion no other factors will hamper it from outside because basically for this particular enzyme or any other enzyme we are checking with this idea of enzyme kinetics with michaels menten equation uh, if any other component like inhibitor comes in then this value will change it will not be the same so we need to make sure that no inhibitor is acting no other cooperative binding is working no other things like that is working okay so you need to make sure that this thing is there okay so what we can clearly say in steady state so it satisfies this three important features so in steady state what we can say the formation of enzyme substrate so what we can clearly say let me take another color here we can clearly say formation of enzyme substrate equals to breakdown of enzyme substrate so the amount of enzyme substrate complex is being formed the same amount is been broken down so basically that is what steady state is all about 
that is the steady state is all about right and remember k1 is for the rate constant of enzyme substrate complex formation k2 is the rate constant of product formation k minus 1 is the rate constant of partial breakdown of enzyme substrate back to enzyme and substrate due to this portion to be reversible in nature okay so what we can say from here is that so we know all these values right we know k1 k minus 1 and k2 so what we can say what is the velocity so now we come velocity of an enzyme reaction velocity how fast the reaction can occur that depends on the rate that is k1 k2 k minus 1 these values so velocity of the reaction which is calculated to be what we can say the uh, formation of product velocity for the formation of product what we can clearly say for the formation of product remember i told you earlier that uh, the idea is simply the formation of enzyme substrate is k1 into ks okay and the formation of product will be k2 into es k2 into es so it will be k2 into enzyme substrate complex the concentration of enzyme substrate complex and we write it as r value or v0 velocity for the formation of product because k2 is the rate constant for formation of product easy right so till this point i believe you have a clear idea about how to get an idea about the rate of formation of enzyme substrate complex this is this one and the formation of product which, which is also known as velocity v0 initial velocity of the reaction k2 into es you know both of this okay now we are trying to derive the michaelis menten equation how we, how we can derive that that is something that many students get confused about and i also got confused so now let's move to that part and i'm trying to explain it as simple as i can okay so from the steady state so the very first thing i'll write from steady state from steady state assumptions this is very very important without steady state assumption we cannot uh, apply any of this knowledge that we got okay so what we got first thing rate for enzyme substrate complex formation rate of enzyme substrate complex formation and we decided with k1 uh, sorry r1 right sorry rate 1 r1 we write it as r1 okay and what else we know we also know another thing let me write rate for product formation rate for product formation that is r2 let's talk it about r2 for product formation okay so now we'll start working with this one the rate for enzyme substrate complex formation that is r1 so r1 can be written as remember what k1 because the forward direction remember let me write the equation once more for you uh, so it start with enzyme plus substrate it became enzyme substrate complex this is forward reverse enzyme plus product and this is k1 this is k2 this is k minus 1 okay this is what we had so we will continue our okay r so the rate for formation of es is k1 into what enzyme substrate complex the concentration here right so basically to produce this what we need to have we need to have a k1 into enzyme concentration into substrate concentration at the very beginning because we started with this one right not this one particularly with this one okay right so this is what we started with r1 equals to k1 into enzyme concentration into substrate concentration now what will be the total amount of enzyme that is available because remember this steady state assumption 
told us and it actually states us that the substrate concentration must be more than the enzyme concentration. But at this present moment, what is the amount of free enzyme? So think about it, free enzyme. So there is total enzyme. So enzyme, so let's say this is total enzyme minus enzyme substrate complex that is formed. So this is free enzyme. E, equal, e means free enzyme, the total amount of free enzyme at this point T. So at time T, what we found, the enzyme concentration equals to total enzyme minus the enzyme occupied by the enzyme substrate complex, right? Right? It is the total enzyme present at the beginning of this enzyme substrate bound, uh, at the beginning where the enzyme is bound to the substrate at this moment. So now what we can do, we can uh, substitute this value. So remember here, we can substitute this R1 K1 into instead of E what we can write what we can write let me write it here total enzyme minus ES like that and you need to put the th third bracket to show the concentration when we put the third bracket it means the concentration of that particular component here okay so this is what we get okay into substrate concentration so basically we are substituting the value of e here at this point so you got this okay this is what we got and now we want to find out the rate of dissociation the second one the r2 value rate of dissociation so let me take another color here blue the value for r2 hmm? R2 equals to what will be again K R2 is dissociation so K minus 1 enzyme substrate concentration plus what will be K2 into again what enzyme substrate concentration because look at here the dissociation of so this is dissociation of enzyme substrate there are two ways the enzyme substrate dissociation is possible one the enzyme substrate can go back to enzyme and substrate backward and the rate constant is k minus 1 or the es or enzyme substrate concentration that can be dissociated into enzyme and product which is our desired one where the rate constant is k2 so two ways it can dissociate so r2 will account for both this is for the backward reaction this is for the forward reaction okay for the product so this is the value for r2 so remember in steady state assumption what we talked in very simple terms what we can clearly say that the formation of enzyme substrate and the dissociation of enzyme substrate concentration is equal. Right? So the formation of enzyme substrate, dissociation of enzyme substrate equal. Right? So now we have this two, we have this value R1 value and R2 value right and we know as per our understanding both are equal so we can clearly place them together right so what we get from here r1 equals r2 r1 equals r2 so let me write r1 instead of r1 let, let's write k1 into et concentration minus es Please bear with my bad handwriting here. Substrate concentration, this one, equals to value of R2, that is K minus 1, enzyme substrate concentration, sorry, plus K2, enzyme substrate concentration. So you get this. Okay. We got this. Now from this, we are trying to rearrange this now. 
we will rearrange this okay so multiple rearrangement is needed for this particular case now this is something that we can all do that as per our own pace you can do that as per our own pace i'm not going to do that because it'll be complicated and will simply fill this page without doing anything so i'll jump few stages and particularly at the end what we'll get basically what you need to do you need to do this arrangement and find out uh, take like keep uh, the enzyme substrate concentration in the left side of the equation and if you do that after two three stages what we'll get we'll get something like this enzyme substrate concentration in left side equals to what we get in the top k1 total enzyme concentration substrate concentration divided by we get k minus 1 plus k2 plus k1 multiplied to substrate concentration so this is what we will get after three four different stages i jumped the stage here okay finally so remember that i must highlight here i jumped the stage find out the concentration of es enzyme substrate okay and you can easily count that you can write it down in your page and paper if you are uh, using any right now okay okay now from this again further rearrangement needed so what kind of rearrangement i will do here uh, so we divide them by k1 okay and uh, if we divide it with k uh, k1 in both the sides what we'll get let's let's find it out so we'll, we'll get this value We'll divide both top and bottom with K1. So we'll get enzyme concept because this is this is the common value that we get, right? This one divided by K minus 1 plus K2 plus. So in both this case, we have K1, K1 and it will be S like this, okay? So this is what we get at this moment. Okay, this is what we get at this moment. Now at this point, you get something like this value. You have ET into substrate concentration divided by this complicated value. We have substrate concentration plus a value like that. Okay, so let's let's rearrange it further. ET substrate concentration, and this will be K1 plus K K minus one plus K2 by K1 plus substrate concentration okay so now this particular value i want you to focus on here this particular value k minus 1 plus k2 k minus 1 plus k2 divided by k1 so the rate constant of dissociation on the top and the rate constant of uh, i mean uh, yeah uh, rate constant of formation on the bottom now i don't want to explain it right here i want you to watch my other lecture on uh, the enzyme properties and enzyme uh, catalysis particularly enzyme catalysis reactions where we discussed about this value that this k minus 1 plus k2 divided by k1 this is actually known as value known as km now what is km km is defined at this with the help of this particular uh, equation came is also known as the affinity it's help help to determine the affinity of an enzyme towards a substrate okay so basically came is a value where half of the maximum velocity the substrate basically is a substrate concentration it is basically the substrate concentration at which half of the maximum velocity is reached by any enzymatic reaction and we can easily measure with this value k minus 1 plus k2 by k1 so if we substitute this value in this equation what we found out here is et into s divided by km plus s okay this is what we got so now now what we want to find out if we look at the very first 
equation of ours k1 into es the r1 is k1 into es right and total enzyme concentration is being used here and what we are actually finding here from the top from the from the beginning is uh, the equation and this is what we are getting we are getting as a velocity so basically these values we are getting are the velocity the initial velocity or v0 all right so what we had here we have this value right so what we are actually measuring es enzyme substrate concentration right es equals to et into s divided by km plus s so we are very close to that michaelis menten equation i believe you have uh, you know what michaelis menten equation is you know the exact equation but we are very close but now how to substitute this value enzyme substrate concentration equals to total enzyme into substrate concentration divided by km plus substrate concentration now if i go back a little bit you can see this one i told you the velocity or v0 or velocity means the production of product the development of product as a result of enzyme substrate reaction is k2 into es right so simply from this what we can arrange the enzyme substrate concentration equals to v0 by k2 we can write it like this right so let's substitute the enzyme substrate value as v0 by k2 here okay here v0 by k2 and then rest of the values that is et into substrate km plus substrate from that what we can derive let's see so v0 will be k2 into enzyme total enzyme into substrate concentration divided by km plus substrate concentration isn't it simple algebra okay now the last the last step you see k2 into total enzyme concentration k2 into total enzyme concentration what is it total enzyme is present and k2 is the rate of dissociation of enzyme substrate into product so if we have all enzymes present all the enzymes free to produce product then we can reach maximum velocity isn't it so the maximum velocity is possible when there is maximum amount of enzyme that is total enzyme present and we can find out the rate by multiplying it with k2 that is a dissociation rate constant from es to enzyme plus product so this k2 into et can give us maximum velocity which is denoted as v max v max into substrate concentration divided by km plus substrate concentration got it now this is what we get this is what we get is known as a michaelis menten equation okay so remember the michaelis menten equation is possible only when we understand the steady state concept and all the assumptions of the steady state concept are met then only we can say the rate of formation of es rate of dissociation of es are equal and at that moment only when they are equal we can put the r1 equals r2 we can start the equation we can start uh, de deciphering the equation from here and slowly we'll move to get the value so this v0 is the velocity of the reaction at any given time v max is the maximum velocity right if i finally summarize this for you finally summarize v max maximum velocity okay s substrate concentration initial substrate concentration okay km in this case it is michaelis con constant this is in this case is acting as a michaelis constant okay and this is basically a concentration unit because i told you it's a substrate concentration it's a substrate concentration at which half the vmax can be reached that's a topic for a separate video to discuss but we can simply say this is as a constant and we call it as a michaelis menten constant k okay. hmm? so now if we interpret km what we will get let me also tell you that before closing in so 
केम इज माइकेल इज मेनटेन कॉन्स्टेंट ओके एंड इट इज ऑल्सो अ कंसेंट्रेशन वैल्यू इट इज ऑल्सो अ कंसेंट्रेशन इट कैरीज अ कंसेंट्रेशन वैल्यू सो के एम इज डिफाइंड एज अ रेशियो ऑफ रेट कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर द डिसोसिएशन ऑफ एंजाइम सब्सटेट विद द कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एंजाइम सब्सटेट सो के एम इज रिटर्न एज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डिसोसिएशन ऑफ एंजाइम सब्सटेट इज K माइनस वन इज अ बैकवर्ड डिसोसिएशन के टू फॉरवर्ड डिसोसिएशन डिवाइडेड बाई के वन विच इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एंजाइम सब्सटेट कॉम्प्लेक्स सो इट्स सो वट वट काइंड ऑफ यूनिट इज है इट हैज मोलर यूनिट ओके सो दिस इज हाउ द केम इज रिप्रेजेंटेड राइट so now if i give you some situation situation number of if k2 concentration is less than k minus 1 k minus 1 means so basically what we are talking again every single time we are trying to explain we need to draw this this is very very important otherwise we cannot discuss right and the, let, let let's put the constant in here so we are only talking about the dissociation here from es so we have this and we have this so the k2 value is less than k1 means the formation of enzyme product will be less chance than the formation of enzyme and substrate release of enzyme from substrate basically right so that means what this particular equation governs governs what the affinity the affinity of the enzyme so if this value of k2 is very very low then k minus 1 then we can write it like this k2's value is very very low than k minus 1 so basically we can write it like this so we can uh, we can just neglect k2 so we have this right so now what does that mean k m equals to k minus 1 by k1 so if the k m value is high that means K minus one is more than K one, and if the K M value is low, that means K minus one is lower than K one. So what does that signifies? It signifies if more the K M value, the chance of dissociation of enzyme substrate to enzyme and substrate is more. So product formation chance is less. That means less affinity of substrate towards enzyme. higher came less affinity lower came more affinity of substrate towards enzyme okay got it and one more way we can uh, derive this idea remember one more thing i told you that this came is a concentration value it has a molar concentration representation and i told you the came acts as a substrate concentration at which half of the vmax can be reached how we can decipher that so let's write michael is maintain equation start from that and till this point i believe you know uh, what we mean by michael is maintain equation v0 equals to okay vmax into s divided by km plus s right so now what we want to do is there half of the maximum velocity if you want to reach half of the maximum velocity okay so what we intend to derive is that what will be the value when the half vmax is received so half vmax so v0 we make it as a half vmax so we'll get this from there what we can say km plus subset concentration Equals to two into subset concentration. So basically, K M equals to what? Subset concentration. So this is what we get. The K M will become subset concentration where the velocity of the enzymatic reaction can be half of the maximum velocity. So we can say that the K M is 
the substrate concentration when half of the maximum velocity of the enzyme can be achieved or reached. This is the overall idea about the Michaelis Menten equation. Okay. The very basic idea about the enzyme kinetics, the Michaelis Menten equation. So, from this Michaelis Menten equation, we get to know about the relationship between K minus 1 and K2, dissociation rate constants. We also got an idea about the maximum velocity, we got an idea about the total enzyme concentration, we got an idea about the Km and how Km impacts an enzyme reaction. The, the Km's role in affinity of an enzyme binding towards its substrate. Now this is the mathematical representation of Michaelis Menten equation. Now if we want to put this mathematical equation into a graph form, then what we will get? Okay. This is what we will see now. Let's put a graph. The very first thing that I mistakenly did is the, the sorry, just a moment. Okay, let's put it. Although it's not straight, but you should draw it straight. Okay. So, what we have in graph always put the axis first, x, y. Okay. Velocity of the enzyme, we'll put in the y axis. Velocity of the enzyme. And uh, what we put here in the x-axis, substrate concentration. So basically V0 in the y-axis, substrate concentration in the x-axis. And from this, if we start to put that, start to fit the data with an experimental data, what we get is something like this. Okay. This is, what kind of graph is this? Hyperbolic. Okay. What is hyperbolic? That means if we increase the substrate concentration, if we keep increasing the substrate concentration, then the rate of the reaction increases rapidly at the very beginning. You can see that it is increasing rapidly. Okay, it's continue to increase until a sudden level where it can reach a maximum capping and that is the maximum velocity for the enzyme reaction. This is the capping here, right? Let's say this is the capping. So this is what we call it as a V max, maximum velocity. Okay. And as we know, if this is the maximum velocity, then what is the halfway through velocity? Half of the V max. This is half V max. Okay. This is half of the V max. And if this is half V max, if we can drag it equivalent towards the substrate concentration here, then the, the substrate concentration where half the Vmax is re reached will be termed as Km as per our understanding, as per our previous understanding. So this is the very simple Michaelis maintained graph. Very, very simple. Hyperbolic gra graph, substrate concentration in the x-axis, velocity in the y-axis. We can get to know about the Vmax. We can get to know about the Km from this graph quite easily. Hmm? Now, let's do a little modification to this graph. Holding this idea in mind, holding the idea of Michaelis Menten equation in mind. Remember, you probably have heard this term line weaver Berg plot. And when students say line weaver Berg plot, they always ask me a question like, why do we always talk about line weaver Berg? What, why it is important? The hyperbolic graph is quite well in depicting the uh, idea about interactions and basically uh, we can easily get to know about the vmax came and so on so things but it is not good in finding out the kinetic data that is present in an enzyme kinetic reaction we can get to know about the came and vmax but we cannot find out the proper the exact came and vmax values okay and one more problem is when we are discussing about other kinds of enzyme kinetic reactions because I told you that the enzyme kinetics is not only Michaelis Menten kinetics there are pre-steady state kinetics there are allosteric kinetics so on those cases Michaelis Menten graph is not acceptable at all okay so to prevent that and to, to get better data another graphical approach was used so basically this is not that complicated. This is simple. Uh, what we did, we, we do a reverse or inversal. We invert, 
we invert Michael is maintained equation and once we invert the Michael is maintained equation so what we get 1 by V0 equal to the reversal Km Vmax into substrate concentration plus 1 by Vmax this is what we will get. This is a new exposed line weaver work. This is known as the line weaver work equation. We just invert the Michael is maintain equation. Okay. So basically, once we have this and then we put it into the graph form, what we get is little different. Okay. Now x axis y axis what we put in the y axis is 1 by v0 inverse of sub, uh, velocity and we put 1 by substrate concentration in the x axis invertly ok we need to do this extrapolation over there and what we found out is something like this the graph looks something like this straight line and there are intercepts two different intercepts one is intercepting a y axis another intercepting x axis ok the one intercepting y axis obviously is the velocity value and this is basically velocity for what maximum velocity inverse of maximum velocity or inverse of v max and the one that is in intercepting the x axis beyond zero here in the minus value ok this is again subset concentration value so what value it is 1 by km minus 1 by km this value we got in the interception of the x axis so now why we use this line weaver burke plot and not the michaelis maintain plot in order to analyze and and find out the differences between different enzymes and to find out the relation of different inhibitions of different enzymes, different modes of inhibitions. Okay, why we did that? Okay, let me give you this uh, example with the help of this picture. So, let me show you this is the graph. Okay, x axis, y axis, everything is fine. Now, let's say there are two different two different enzymes, two different enzymes you are talking about, one enzyme, second enzyme, okay, it should be straight line though, but uh, let me explain what I mean, so you can see that this is, this is say enzyme X, this is enzyme Y, so what we can clearly see is that in enzyme X, 1 by Vmax is higher here, 1 by Vmax is here, so what we can say? reversal value of 1 by v max this is and this is minus 1 by km value minus 1 by km value ok this is also 1 by v max value for what enzyme y this is for enzyme x this is again for enzyme x this is for enzyme y so what we can tell from here the line two different lines in very layman's knowledge what we can clearly say that yes uh, the enzyme x has a line on the top y has line on the bottom and the vmax is inverse that what does that mean that means the vmax value for enzyme x it's in the top that means top of inverse of vmax that means the vmax value for x is less than vmax value for y we can tell that so enzyme x has lower vmax than enzyme y similarly the km value is far away in the minus range for x then the km value for y so we can say the km value for x is also lower than km value for y you can also tell that so ey here has more km value more vmax while enzyme x has less vmax less km less km means enzyme x has more affinity towards its substrate while y has less affinity towards this substrate so all this information we can gather from this one graph that is line weaver burke plot 
to so so we can easily find it out we can easily find out all these features and, and varieties that's why we can use line weaver bug plot to compare different enzyme their affinities their properties we can also compare the different types of enzyme inhibition with the help of this line weaver bug plot in the in inhibition and, and regulation of enzyme lecture you can clearly see we'll discuss about uh, how we can use this line of bird plots to find out the differences that are present there okay and that is something unique okay and this michaelis menten equation can also be modified it can be modified into two different other types of graphs as well let me conclude it uh, with these two things so modifications modifications of michaelis menten graph one modification we already saw and this is not uh, only utilizing michaelis menten equation but modifying it and line line weaver plot is more important but apart from that there are two more graphs that uh, we can always produce from modified version of line uh, michaelis menten one is known as ad hofstede plot another one is the hans wolf equation hans wolf so ad hofstede and hans wolf equation so ad hofstede if we talk about ad hofstede equation ad of steep plot what modification is done v0 and simply we we multiply it with the substrate concentration basically that's it so v max we have by km plus uh, sorry it will be minus v0 by km this is the equation that we have in ad of steep this is ad of steep equation hmm? and uh, due to this equation what kind of graph uh, we can clearly see in this case again let me draw like this and this is basically normally in case of michaelis maintain the graph start from zero like that and hyperbolic curve like that here this is a straight line and uh, you can see the v0 by substrate is used here substrate concentration v0 by substrate concentration in the x axis uh, sorry y axis and the v0 velocity in the x axis so basically if we put velocity in the x axis then we get this ad hofstede plot and what kind of plot we have we have plot like this okay so this intercepts in the y that gives us this value v max by km value and the intercept in the x simply give gave us v v max maximum velocity because this is where the velocity is speaking right maximum velocity and the y intercept value gives us v max by km value that's ad hofstede plot i'm not going to dig deep uh, in this case second plot a uh, second equation again we have reversal of ad hofstede so basically reverse it substrate concentration on top then v0 equals to what will be there again substrate concentration on top v max on the bottom plus km by v max reversal again okay this is what we got this is known as hence wolf hence wolf hans wolf equation okay and now if you put the hans wolf equation into a graph it will look little bit like a line weaver type but they are not the same they are totally different this will be looking like line weaver y axis x axis substrate concentration in the x axis no change about it and but the change is substrate concentration by v0 that will be in the y axis and two intercepts here and here the y intercept here y intercept what will be the value this will be the value came by v max and x intercept value here simply minus km okay basically these are the two separate graphs i just put it uh, just to know just in case you need it but it's not needed for most of the examinations here so generally our idea is uh, like you need to simply keep your idea till the portion of michaelis menten equation obviously in a better way and also to the line weaver bug plot so that you can answer most of the question from line weaver bug plot in details okay so this is all about the enzyme kinetics okay and the enzyme kinetics once you understand enzyme kinetics there are few things that we need to understand we need to discuss basically we know the enzyme kinetics we deal with the substrate concentration the velocity what is maximum velocity and we know the enzyme the more the substrate is there the chances of the velocity will increase until a sudden phase right so for example we have this we have enzymes right we have a maximum amount of enzyme and we have substrate 
and the substrate is higher than enzyme concentration the substrate keeps on added the substrate will be converted into product but until or unless there is limitation of enzyme the enzyme will run out after a certain time because that means all the enzyme subunit all the enzyme active site will be bound to the substrate at that moment once it reaches like that there will be a maximum velocity reached that's how maximum velocity velocity is reached now from this idea of maximum velocity the idea of enzyme affinity towards its substrate we also need to understand a simple important concept that is known as the catalytic efficiency of an enzyme which is counted as a turnover number of that enzyme okay and we'll also understand about the specificity constant and what is catalytic efficiency how to find out the turnover number of an enzyme because when i say uh, that uh, because in CSI, NED, GATE, ICMR, most of these examinations where they ask mathematical questions from uh, this chapter, okay, uh, from enzyme, they generally ask for, to calculate catalytic efficiency or uh, the turnover number. So, the next lecture is all about the understanding of catalytic efficiency and turnover number.